A force is a push or a pull. It cannot be seen, but we can see what it can do. Take this ball. A ball is a non-living thing. A non-living thing, like this ball, cannot move by itself. We must push the ball to move it. When I threw the ball, I used force to push it, making it to move. Force is a push or a pull that causes objects to move. Let's see other examples of pushing. Pressing Pushing Blowing And Cycling We use force to press the dough, push the wooden block, blow a balloon and ride a bicycle. We have seen examples of pushing. Now let's look at some examples of pulling. Pulling out. Stretching. Pulling. And opening. We use force to pull out the nail Stretch the spring, pull the wooden block and open the door. When we say the effects of a force, we are talking about the result or what happens when we apply force on an object. When a force is applied, stationary objects start to move. There will be a change in the motion of an object and there will be a change in the shape of an object. A stationary object will not move unless a force is applied to it. For example, a stationary ball will remain in the same position unless a force is applied to it. When I kicked the ball, I was actually pushing it. That push is the force that I use to move the ball. How fast or how the ball moves depends on the force exerted on it. The harder we kick the ball, the faster the ball moves. So, when a force is applied, stationary objects start to move. Now let's see how a force can change in the motion of an object. A force can cause a moving object to stop. For example, when I catch a moving ball with my hands, the ball will stop. You see, when I catch the ball, I exert an opposing force on the moving ball by catching it. That opposing force stops the moving ball. So, a force can cause a moving object to stop. A force can change the direction of a moving object. When we blow at a moving ping-pong ball, the moving ping-pong ball changes direction. This also applies in a game of badminton. The racket exerts a force on the shuttlecock that causes the shuttlecock to change direction. So, a force can change the direction of a moving object. A force can also change the speed of a moving object. When a force is exerted in the same direction as the movement of an object, it can speed up the movement of the movement. For example, when we blow at a ping-pong ball in the direction to its movement, the ping-pong ball moves faster. When the force exerted and the movement of the object 
is in opposite direction, the force can slow down the movement of the object. For example, when we blow at a ping-pong ball in the opposite direction to its movement, the speed of the ping-pong ball decreases. So, a force can change the speed of a moving object. A force can change the shape of an object. When a force is exerted on a soft object like this plasticine, the shape of the plasticine will change. See what happens when I squeeze, stretch, bend, twist, or squash this plasticine. I squeeze the plasticine. Bend the plasticine. Twist the plasticine. Squash the plasticine. The plasticine changes to many shapes and sizes. When a force is exerted on a fragile object, like a piece of paper, the object will be torn or broken apart. See what happens to it when I use force to tear it. The paper is torn into bits when I use force to tear it. Friction is produced when two surfaces rub against each other. Friction opposes the movement of an object and the direction of the friction is always opposite to the direction of the movement of an object. When a block of wood is moved along a plank, the block of wood will eventually come to a rest. You see, when the block of wood and the plank rub against each other, friction occurs, making the block of wood eventually come to a rest. Friction is the invisible force that opposes the movement of the block of wood. The direction of friction is always opposite to that of the movement of an object. Friction between two surfaces will make the surfaces warm. If we rub our palms together, they will be warm because friction produces heat. Let's see. Yes, my hands are warm. Friction tends to prevent one surface from moving across another surface easily. We find it hard to pull or push a heavy object because friction opposes the motion. Friction causes wear and tear. These are two pieces of erasers. When I rub this eraser against a surface, the eraser becomes smaller. See the difference? Friction makes a moving object to slow down and stop. Like when we move a wooden block on a plank, it moves and gradually stops. This is because there is friction between the wooden block and the plank. Friction also enables an object to stay in a stationary position. Friction depends on the condition of the surfaces that are rubbing against each other. Smooth surfaces cause smaller friction, while rough surfaces cause greater friction. This is the reason why we find it hard to push or pull a heavy box along a rough surface than along a smooth surface. 
The type of surface affects the distance moved by the object. Friction also depends on the weight of an object. A heavier object exerts a greater fictional force. Friction can be useful in our everyday life. Friction allows us to walk or run without slipping. If there is no friction, we will not be able to walk or run on the ground. Friction also allows vehicles to travel on the road safely. The brake system in vehicles makes use of friction to slow down or stop the vehicles. Friction enables us to hold things because it prevents the object from moving. Friction can be a problem in our everyday life. Friction causes surfaces which are touching each other to wear out. For example, the sole of shoes and tyres of cars or bicycles are worn out as a result of friction. Worn out tyres are dangerous because they can slide and skid easily causing accidents to happen. Friction produces heat in machines. This heat can damage some parts of the machines. Friction also causes wasting of energy. Greater energy is needed to overcome the force of friction to make things move. There are several ways to reduce friction. Friction can be reduced by using rollers or ball bearings. Rollers or ball bearings reduce friction because they reduce the surfaces that are touching each other. Friction can also be reduced by using lubricants such as oil, wax and grease. Oil, for example, lubricates in contact such as a door hinge. Friction also can be reduced by using aerodynamic shape. Friction can be very useful in everyday life. Sometimes we need to increase friction for safety. For example, vehicles need more friction to prevent skidding. Friction can be increased by using a rough material or by making patterns on the surface. Roads are made rough to increase friction so that motor vehicles using them will not skid easily. Patterns on the surfaces of tyres are made to increase friction between the tyres and the road surface. Special patterns can also be seen on the sole of shoes. These patterns help to increase friction exerted by the soles of the shoes. That's today's program. Thank you.